curvaceous, loud, and arrogant. This is probably the Michelangelo of rolling art. And this is my 1973 big block Mako Shark. First saw Mako Shark in some magazines when I was in my youth. It's been something of a lifetime quest that I always wanted to build a Mako Shark. My wife always knows when I'm on a country road, my head's on a swivel. Always looking for that barn find, and this was sitting in the field. Had no rear end underneath it, no front clip, but I had to double take and I went back and looked, and sure enough, it was uh, an original 70s Mako Shark. Mako Shark was a futuristic concept designed by GM. Although it never made it to market, a watered-down design eventually resulted in the production vehicle, the C3 Corvette. The name came from its streamlined shape, pointed snout, and fast-moving action, similar to a short-finned Mako Shark. John put in the time and got this Mako looking like magic, giving it a complete makeover and bringing it up to date. Not bad for a concept car found in a field. It had been sitting probably for 15 years. The front end was wrecked, but the rear end was in solid, solid condition. So we searched for basically a donor car. Started building this off of a SCCA frame of an old race car, 73 Corvette race car that also had wrecked in the front end. Since we were starting with a ground up restoration, I wanted to stay true to the original Mako. There's not a component on that car that hasn't been replaced. We reproduced a lot of the brackets by having them water jet cut. Instead of out of steel, we used aluminum. The actual shark emblem, we reproduced that as well. I wanted modern braking, modern AC. Uh, we switched to uh, an electric fuel pump and it's got up upgraded steering. This fantastic find has been restored to perfection. I want to build a car because I want to know what's in it. I want to hand pick the components and I want to make sure that when this car is finished, I know every piece of the car. The hood vents are actual functioning hood vents. The gas tank originally was located here in the center, but we moved it over here again to pay homage to the original 64. And inside the Mako, she's a blast from the past. The interior was basically kept original. I really love the 80s seats. So we put the 80s leather seats in it instead of the period correct seats. But other than that, original shifter, original carpet. One of the unique things we have here is we got rid of the battery tray. Underneath this aluminum is a uh, is plexiglass. So if I remove the louvers, you can actually look all the way down through the car to the pavement. I rarely take the car above 55 or 60 for the reasons of preserving the car. But from stoplight to stoplight, it'll certainly pin you back in your seat. It does draw an enormous crowd whenever we go, just for the simple fact that it is so unique. Thank you. A lot of them ask if they can touch it. <laughs> it's like a unicorn. Restoring cars has been something that to me has always been more like an art form. It's, it's one of the things that, that I hope to pass on to the next generation that they're fun and, they're, and they are family.